how to tell if a number is prime fast. Like if I give you a big number, how will you be able to immediately say if it's prime or not? Now that's a very hard question, but I'm gonna show you a beautiful case study which is for two digit numbers. By the end of this video, you'll be able to tell whether one is prime just like that, instantaneously. I'm gonna show you the method and then give you the simple criterion. So first of all, if we have a two digit number, how do we actually decide if it's prime or not? Well, it's gonna be tricky because, for example, if someone gave you something like 83 or they gave you something like 97, how do you just look at it and decide if it's prime? The first thing most people would do if they saw this for the first time and they knew what a prime number was, was they would check all the numbers between one and 83 and check if it divides 83. And that would take a long, long time. That's very tedious to do. So how do you actually do it very quickly? Now there's a very beautiful trick you can do and this is the first basis of our theory. And the second basis of our theory will give us the criterion for quickly doing it. Okay, so how do you actually figure out if the number is prime? So here's a beautiful trick. Let's say a two digit number n, okay? Let's call it n. Now suppose n was not prime, okay? n was equal to a times b, where a and b are smaller factors. What's interesting is that both a and b cannot be greater than the square root of n. Why is that? Well, if a was greater than the square root of n, and if b was greater than the square root of n, then the product a times b would be greater than the square root of n times the square root of n, which is of course equal to n. And that's impossible. So it's not possible because AB is after all equal to N, right? So AB cannot be greater than N. So that means that one of these numbers has to be less than or equal to the square root of N. If you can factor N as A times B, we therefore know, and we're gonna write this in this way, therefore A has to be less than or equal to the square root of N or B has to be less than or equal to the square root of N. Why is that interesting? Because what it means is that to check if a number is prime or not, if it is not prime, it has to have a factor less than or equal to its square root. And for two digit numbers, numbers up to 100, the square root is, is going to be less than or equal to 10. So a number is two digits, is not prime, precisely when it has a factor that is, has a single digit. So that factor could be one, two, three up to nine, but of course any number one, two, three up to nine will have a prime factor that's a single digit. And the prime numbers one to nine are easy enough to write down. What are they? Well, the prime numbers from one to nine are going to be two, three, five, and seven, right? Any single digit number will have one of these as a factor. You know, eight has two as a factor, six has three as a factor, nine has three as a factor. So one of these prime factors is going to go into that. And any two digit number is going to have a factor that's a single digit. So therefore every two digit number is going to have a prime factor that is one of these four. So to check if a two digit number is prime, we just have to check very fast whether it's divisible by any of these. And if it's not divisible by any of these, we know it's prime. If it is, we know it's not prime. And that's really cool. So how do you quickly say if it's divisible by all of these? Seven's going to be the most interesting. So let's just dive into it. All right, so now let's give the criterion quickly for deciding if a number is prime. That is, it's not divisible by any of these. And this is something you can teach kids, okay? It's super impressive. Even most people don't know this. You can just do this right off the top of your head. So let's start off with a two digit number, we call it x, y. Okay, so I'm using very careful notation here. X and Y are the decimal digits of the number. Okay, so for example, you could have a number like 83, then X is equal to eight and Y is equal to three. Okay, just to kind of state the criterion very simply. So the first thing is we have to see, is it divisible by two? How do we check it's divisible by two? We basically ask is Y equal to zero, two, four, six, or eight? Okay, the second digit, should not be any of these, then it's not divisible by two. Otherwise it is divisible by two. Okay, that's the first criterion, pretty easy. We just need to make sure our number is not even. Okay, the criteria are gonna get more interesting. Now divisible by three, what happens? So again, what's interesting with divisible by three, there's a nice little test that we know is that X plus Y is divisible by three. Okay, then our number is divisible by three. So that converts the problem into understanding whether a single digit number is divisible by three, which is easy enough to do, okay? So we've got that far, that's pretty cool. Single digit or maybe a two digit number, okay? Maybe a very small two digit number, okay? So it could be 96 and you have 15 or something, okay? But that's easy enough to do. 
The third one is divisible by five. So what happens to, well, how do we see if a number is divisible by five? Okay, so in that case, we're just looking at the last digit. It shouldn't be zero or five. So we just want to say that y is equal to zero or five. Those are the cases where our number is divisible by five. So, so far it's pretty easy to do this mentally. Okay, you can just really do this. 83 is left, eight plus three is 11, not divisible by three or not divisible by two. Doesn't end in zero or five, not divisible by five. Pretty easy. Same with 97, nine plus seven is 16. That's really the test, you know, divisible by three. 16 is not divisible by three. Checking is divisible by two or five is pretty straightforward. Okay, so let's now find out the divisibility by seven rule, okay? So let's write that out. For seven, here's a cool criteria and you can actually try to think why this works, okay? It's an exercise, drop a comment down below, I'd love to see it. If you're enjoying the content so far, please don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe for all levels of math, all topics. I love creating math videos for free and your liking and your supporting and watching makes a huge difference to my channel. Consider sharing it with friends, family, classmates, just for lots of fun math across all levels. Okay, so for divisibility by seven, what do we wanna do? Is we wanna look at the following, so I'm gonna put this as criterion four. Basically for divisible by seven, we want to look at x minus two y and ask is that divisible by seven? Okay, so that's the criterion. And again, drop a comment down below why that works. Okay, that's just for two digit numbers even. Okay, it's actually, uh, there's a generalization for higher digit numbers, but just for two digit numbers, x minus two y is divisible by seven. So now we have our criteria. We just have to mentally look at x plus y and x minus two y and just check if it's divisible by three or seven because two and five are pretty easy. So let's just do some fun examples. Okay, so you can just play along. It's a little game. We can just do it together. So let's start off, okay, let's say 73. So I can quickly see two and five, okay? So I'm not going to include numbers divisible by two or five. We just have to look at y, the last digit, pretty easy. 73, their sum is 10, not divisible by three. Seven minus two times three is one, not divisible by seven. So this is going to be prime, okay, prime number. Next one, let's look at 98. 98, okay, that's not going to be prime because eight is, it's even, right? So that's not going to be prime. Let's look at another one, let's look at 91, 91. Nine plus one is 10, not divisible by three, but nine minus two times one is seven. That is divisible by seven. In fact, this is going to be 13 times seven, so it's not prime, okay? So pretty cool. So let's go on, 83, 83, eight plus three, 11. Eight minus two times three, two. Not divisible by three or seven, not divisible by two or five, so it's going to be prime, okay? So keep going. Let's look at 87, 87, eight plus seven is 15. Oh, that's divisible by three. So this is going to be not prime. Okay, so you can see that very quickly, you know, 67, six plus seven, 13, six minus two times seven, two times seven is 14, six minus 14 is minus eight, not divisible by seven. So this is going to be prime. So you kind of see how we can quickly do this. As you get practice, you can just do this right immediately. You don't have to check all the numbers up to your number. You just have to check two, three, five, and seven. Those are the rules. If you enjoyed this video, as I said, please leave a like. Drop a comment down below why the divisibility by seven and the divisibility by three rules work. You know, what's the rigorous mathematical reasoning? I'm going to do a series on them because they're fun little videos. Um, I hope you love that. Thanks so much to Alex, Nathan, and Trang for their ongoing support as gold members of Patreon. Makes a world of difference to the channel. And it's a total game changer because I currently do everything on my own. And with support, you know, even a small number of people supporting my channel, it makes a huge difference, allows me to create lots more fun math content. I love doing everything. So please consider supporting, plus the exclusive perks, access to a members only forum, exclusive updates and news about my channel, plus priority replies to YouTube comments and a personalized thank you message. My ongoing gratitude to you and I'll always remember everyone who supports. So in the future, as I keep creating more and more math content, I'll definitely give you some free content. It's not something penciled in, but I plan on creating more advanced math courses over time, say over the next one year or two years and everyone who supports, you know, I'll definitely remember you and try to give you a little thank you, you know, as my channel keeps growing in addition to all the perks I mentioned. So please consider supporting on Patreon or a YouTube channel membership. Thanks to Enehota and AJR for their ongoing support as a YouTube channel member as well. You can click the join button to support there. And if you want to see another fun video, it's very related to this. It's more theoretical math. It's a divisor function. It counts how many numbers up to N are divisors of N. And there is a fun way of estimating what this number should be. And it's a mathematical proof. You check it out here, you're gonna love it. It's about the divisor function, very important function in analytic number theory. And if there's another video you want to watch, it's about, again, prime numbers, relatively prime numbers. It's super fun. It's a video on the Euler-Toshin function. It's theoretical advanced number theory. 
but it's for advanced students, but it's very, very fun and very cool. So you're gonna love that video. Check it out here.